god, I genuinely think I'm gonna fail this exam. <laughs> what has been your favorite thing about uh, this year? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna head off to the hospital now because I have a lecture series this afternoon about imaging So I believe we're going over x-ray MRI and some other sort of imaging Most of the lectures that we have this year are about the practical side of being a junior doctor Whereas previously it was more about the theoretical knowledge So I'm excited to go to the lecture today because I think it'll have some really good practical advice Later in this week, I have my last ever medical school exam I don't even feel nervous about it because I'm so excited, which I think is a problem because I need to be studying in this last few days before then. From everything that I've heard from the other students who have done the exam previously, I think it's really easy, so it shouldn't be too bad. Looks like I woke up that day and chose to jinx myself. And I have been studying a little bit here and there. Just had an assessment of how to insert an indwelling catheter. We had the same assessment back in MD2, so now we're doing a refresher in MD4 just as we're about to graduate. And it was really cool to do the same assessment that you've done a few years ago because it was really nice to be able to see how much I've grown and changed in that time. The main thing I was being assessed on today was whether I was able to maintain an aseptic environment. So that means was I able to do the procedure without touching excessive things. So that's the main point of the assessment today, along with knowing the main steps of inserting the catheter. And I remember back in MD2 a couple of years ago when I was doing this assessment, it took 100% of my brain power. I had to focus so much on what I was doing. It took all of my brain power to try to remember, okay, which ones are dirty, which ones are clean, what can I touch, what can't I touch? And it was a whole thing that I was nervous about. But today in the assessment, it was so easy for me. I just walked in there, no nerves at all, very easily remembered the steps, was able to maintain a conversation with the person assessing me while I was doing it. It was really awesome to have a direct comparison to how much more ingrained, how much more cerebellar this task has become now that I've been doing it for a few years. It sounds like such an obvious thing that of course you're gonna make progress the more you do something but we spend so much of our time looking ahead and comparing ourselves to people more senior than us and more senior than us, that it's easy to forget how much you've actually learned. So it's nice to have a concrete example of a time where I've done the same thing and I'm doing so much better now. And it just feels nice to know that I've made progress. And it's, it's almost like I'm gonna become a doctor soon. Before I've sat down to study, I take a few minutes to work on brush lettering because I've never had very nice handwriting and I've always wanted to improve. Call it procrastination or self-care, but I find it quite meditative to write a few lines or a page or so before I get to any work. This upside down U shape is my most practiced shape, so I'm the best at it. And my tends to is I want to do this shape all of the time when the skill that I actually should acquire is the circle because that's one that I haven't practiced as much. So it's really interesting to see this example all the time of my tendency to want to practice the thing that I'm already good at and you're not going to improve as fast if you keep just practicing the part that you already know how to do. Pretty much every single person who comes to hospital ends up with some kind of imaging. So it's the bread and butter of intern jobs to be calling radiology or messaging radiology to request an image. As a fresh intern doctor, one of your main jobs within the team is communicating with other teams. So for example, if I'm with an oncology team and my team needs to order an x-ray for one of the patients, it is my job to call radiology or make a referral to radiology, which means open a line of communication with the radiology team uh, to make sure that whatever my team is requesting gets done. 
So we've been casually doing this all year. So that's something I've been doing on the wards with the other interns trying to practice doing this. But this is the first time that we've had someone from radiology actually come down and teach us what to do when we're referring to radiology. Every specialty requires something slightly different from you when making a referral. So for example, infectious diseases, who are the people in the hospital who are responsible for giving antibiotic advice about pathogens and whatnot, they want to know stuff about, I don't even know what it is, source control. Something to do with if the patient has a drain where the that can drain out fluids. Anyway, clearly not made many referrals to infectious diseases. Can you tell? But I have made referrals to radiology and today I learned that I've been doing many referral faux pas. Something that I've done many times speaking to radiology is if they've asked me a question and I don't know the answer, I have said, I don't know why uh, my registrar asked me to do this. And the radiologist today who was giving us the lecture told us that is the most annoying and awful thing that you can say to a radiologist. It is not good enough for us to call up and say, I don't know why I'm ordering this image and my consultant asked me to do it. If you're the person ordering the image, you should know why it's being ordered and you should be able to justify that to the radiologist. My favorite takeaway from that lecture is that the radiologist said that if we're ever in doubt, we should put the words your honor at the end of what we're saying and see how that sounds. My name is going to be on the documentation as the doctor who has ordered the test. So if something was to happen and I had to go into court, would I be comfortable on the stand saying, my consultant asked me to order this test, your honor. It's really not the best response, is it? Another key thing that was talked about is that it's part of the intern's job to make sure the patient is ready to go down to get the imaging that they need. And different imaging needs different things to happen before the patient can have it. So for CT and MRI, so they both need contrast sometimes. What contrast is, is like you can imagine a glass of water, it's clear, you can't really see it. And if you put food dye in that water, then you can see it better. So contrast is a way that we can see imaging better and differentiate structures when you're taking an MRI or a CT scan. But the contrast agent itself, the liquid that we put into the veins to produce the contrast, it has its own list of things that you need to be cautious about. So for one, if someone already has kidney problems, if their kidneys are not that great to start off with, the contrast can actually damage their kidneys some more. It's a process that's called contrast-induced nephropathy, nephropath, nephropathy, and I don't really know what it is, but it's, I imagine that their kidney function might decline even further from having this contrast. So what you need to do as an intern is firstly to check what their kidney function is before they're gonna have the image. And if their kidney function is low and they still do need to have the contrast agent, you might need to think about something like loading them with more water before they go to the procedure so their kidneys have an easier time with clearing the contrast. I so cannot be bothered studying right now, but I think I need to give myself a little final push because it is the last exam and it would be a bit silly to not study for my last exam of medical school. Just for old time's sake, really. My preparation for this exam has been going through a question book that was bootleg passed around to everyone in the year level. It's the Australian Medical Council question book and the Australian Medical Council are the people who set the exam that I'm studying for at the moment. An example question goes like this. Some factors increase the risk for more than one psychiatric disorder. Depression, anxiety, substance use and eating disorders may all have which of the following as a risk factor. Perfectionism and obsessive traits, working at a bar, sexual abuse in childhood, family history of autism or history of intellectual developmental delay. To motivate myself, I've been keeping track of all of the questions that I've done in my bullet journal. And I really do need that motivation because I have been getting so many of these wrong. But talking to the rest of my peers, it sounds like everyone's sort of getting in that ballpark. So overall, it must be kind of a tricky exam. Just getting ready for my exam today. And I'm not feeling particularly nervous, which is a good thing for me, but terrible for the YouTube algorithm because the only thing that anyone wants to click on is videos of people being like Oh my god, I genuinely think I'm gonna fail this exam! No! 
been myself. I can't believe I let this happen. It's just so, my life is falling apart. <laughs> yeah, anyway, fuck me for looking after my mental health. Guys, what did you think of our final exam? It's over. Can you even believe that it is over? It's it's still settling in for me. What has been your favorite thing about uh, this year? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. That's <laughs> good. Yeah, I think because after a grueling MD2 and 3 mm. where they're trying to shove all this information in us, mm. now being a final year. Mm. We're technically supposed to know sufficiently <laughs> enough to be functioning on the ward. So I think yeah. I found it more interesting to kind of apply what we know mm. and not... We're still learning new things, but it's not like everything is completely a foreign concept no. to us. Yeah, I actually remember, I think you were there. I, mean, I don't know who was there, but I definitely you were there. And we had never heard the words like cholidogrosis. No, it was cholidogrosis <laughs> and cholecystitis. Like we just never heard yeah. those words before. And Sonia was teaching us. Was that you oh, then? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so we had never heard those words before. And then they're so common. Like yeah. every second person in the hospital has these conditions, but we'd never heard of it. And the registrar was like, oh, you guys don't know these three words? And then she explained it on like a napkin to us. And we were like, like <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know these words. Like they all sound so similar and so complicated. And now it's just like normal part of your vocabulary, which is pretty crazy. I don't know if you guys have this, but I think about this all the time. When you think back to the, like the peak amount in your life that you've studied, like, oh, not it's sure. like, <laughs> I haven't done that in so long. I was telling Kit, I was, I was literally reflecting. I was yeah. like, I have not slacked off this hard in my whole life. Yeah. I feel like in undergrad, I grinded so hard. So hard. So hard. Yeah. And as soon as they say, oh, it's pass fail for med school, I was like, oh, wee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like right before the exam, I feel like. Yeah. I know you have everything to, be the top yeah, to yeah. like be something. Yeah. And because that they have like that's like so it's kind of twelve weeks worth of knowledge, mm -hmm. nothing outside yeah. the scope. True. It's a lot more this manageable so amount of information as well. So you yeah. can exactly. sit and grind that out. This is medicine. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why anyone told us that exam was easy because it was so fucking hard. And I don't know why Kit and Maggie were so chill about that, but honestly, I'm a bit stressed out because that was really difficult. What I found really difficult about it was that it had a lot of questions that ask for the best next step. So for example, um, if there was a question about pulmonary edema, so that's when there is a fluid buildup in your lungs um, and you need to treat someone for, to get the fluid off their lungs. So the options were like oxygen, um, medication, um, I don't know, put a cannula in, something like that. And when you're in the hospital in real time, in situ, all of those things happen at the same time. Um, but the exam was looking for the best next option, which is really not something that you'd learn on the ward. That's something that you'd read in a book because they would have done a study or something about the best thing to do. So I find that a bit challenging because there was a few answers that were correct, but to pick the best one I wasn't that confident about. But, um, you know, this is me and this is my cycle. I always feel not good after I finish an exam, no matter what happens. So I'll just have to wait and see until I get my results to see how I actually went. But if you are going into MD4 and doing the AKT exam, please study, no matter what everyone tells you. It was actually a really difficult exam. One of the girls from the hospital just messaged our group chat saying that the results for our exam are up and I am fucking scared. This is the worst part about doing exams, honestly. So I'm just going to try to get it up. Okay. It's going to be fine, I'm sure. What's my fucking password? Um, okay. I hate doing this. Okay. Um, logging in and AKT results. Fucking hurry up. It always takes so long. 
Um, and I have fucking passed. <sighs> yeah, I'm so happy. Oh my gosh, I am thrilled. <sighs> That's such a relief. That's the last exam done. And I made it through. And I did pretty well, which is exciting. And oh my gosh, I'm just so, so glad I'm done. I'm sweating. Grey was not a good choice. Oh my gosh. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, it would be awesome if you could like and subscribe as it really helps me um, continue to make videos. And I will see you next time I post. Yay!